How do you complete a Minecraft mod pack? It's a question I've been asked many times. And the simple answer? The simple answer is time, and also the desire to complete the pack. This might sound like an obvious answer, and it is, but let me explain. Over the last two years, I've played close to 3,000 hours worth of modded Minecraft, and who knows how many thousands more since I started playing this game back in 2010. Let's take a look back at some of the mod packs I've played on this channel and discuss some of the things I've learned along the way. Before we begin, let's address the simple answer to the question, how do you complete a mod pack? I do believe that you shouldn't try to force yourself to finish packs. This is a game after all, and it's meant to be fun. I think it's absolutely okay to admit that you're not having any fun and just move on to something else. I do also think that here you have to be really careful. Minecraft, specifically modded Minecraft, is my favourite game of all time, in case it wasn't obvious. <laughs> Even though that is the case, there's still some things in the game which I don't enjoy. There isn't anything I necessarily hate, but there's still some things like, I don't know, Thomcraft research, or terraforming, <laughs> or realising the thing you spent hours on is off by a block. That totally doesn't happen to me. Never. The point I'm making here though is that sometimes you need to go through the, some of the grind and some things you don't enjoy as much for some of the other things like unlocking applied energistics or automating resources, crafting a vending upgrade. All of those things are going to feel so much better if you know you've worked for it a little bit. It's all just a balance you need to find for yourself. The other side of the answer is actually wanting to finish the pack in the first place. If you have no intention or desire to finish the pack, it's very unlikely you're going to do so, especially when the game demands hundreds or sometimes even thousands of hours from you. I do understand that many players prefer to try out lots of different games and packs, playing only a few days at a time and mixing up their gaming experience with plenty of variety. If you are someone like that, a massive Minecraft mod pack, which again takes hundreds or thousands of hours, is going to be very difficult to manage. It's very difficult for me, don't get me wrong, and I tend to play things through to completion, in the vast majority of cases. I think understanding this before you start can help you pick mod packs and objectives within those packs uh, more appropriately to what you would like to get from the experience. But let's say you've picked out a mod pack to play, how do you actually go about completing it? To answer this, let's go through some of the places and worlds I've called home over the last few years in modded Minecraft. So many long-time viewers are going to know exactly where I'm standing right now. Even just logging in here, this bring I logged in a few minutes ago, this brings back so many memories from this place. This is the castle that started it all. This is Enigmatica 2 Expert. This right here is the start of my YouTube channel. So it was about 250 hours to 100% complete the quest book, and also build this mega castle you can see here. Actually, I just spotted a mistake right here, look at this. There's some sort of concrete on that side and stone brick on that side. This would never pass the test these days. <laughs> I can definitely see where uh, where I've improved though. Like this nether brick next to stone brick? Uh-uh. We do all have to start somewhere, and in fact this isn't the beginning of the story for a modded Minecraft in recent years for me. It actually all starts about a year prior to that world. This is a completely separate Enigmatica 2 expert world. This world right here I played on my own before I started YouTube, and is the first time that I'd completed a mod pack. And you guys are going to see just how bad this world actually is. <laughs> like, look at some of this stuff. I can't believe it when I logged in here. But it is true that we all have to start somewhere. Somehow, this got me all of the quests in Enigmatica 2 Expert for the first time. And yeah, as you can kind of imagine here and see, it's, it's awful. Like, <laughs> again with the nether brick. But there's certainly some interesting setups in this base. A lot of this stuff I'd actually forgotten about. Yeah, a bunch of compact machines. There's not really much to say about this world. Uh, not much we can learn from here. At least nothing in terms of base building. I wouldn't copy any of this. <laughs> I guess... Oh, that's a very weird texture for Infinity Armor. I guess the one thing we can take away from this world is that everybody starts somewhere. And I definitely don't consider myself an expert right now, but it's definitely an improvement over this. I think this was actually the world I first... Oh, there's the nuclear reactor there. I forgot about that. I think this was actually the first time I tried out Applied Energistics P2P. Yeah, this was my first ever attempt at a controller right here. Interesting wire decisions, we've got some spaghetti going on here, which as you know is not permitted on this channel. <laughs> this I guess was my machine room. Very heavy use of flux points here, but yeah, this was my first real attempt at Applied Energistics Automation. It's pretty awesome, I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty awesome revisiting this place. I definitely recommend if you guys also play mod packs, keep backups of all your worlds so you can go back in future. And that's also something that can help you with motivation as well. It can allow you to go back to your worlds and see how much progress you've made in terms of your building, your automations, your setups. 
And I definitely think the second time around here, we did a much better job than whatever, <laughs> wherever we were before. My goal with this castle was to build the castle and the mod pack kind of took a back seat. I still wanted to complete it, but the main objective was to finish the castle. And so I basically built the walls first. If you go back and watch the first episode, which I don't recommend, don't do that. <laughs> it's awful. I built the walls first and then built everything else inside of it, which I think is a cool approach to take, but it, it only works for certain mod packs. This castle right here is kind of where I established the first idea of having a main section for applied energistics and almost like a storage room. This is kind of where you have access to every other part of the base and the machine rooms are looking much more organized this time around. Yeah, there's a lot of intricacies to this castle actually I'd completely forgotten about. There's even some outdoor garden areas, which is pretty cool. Yeah, lots of uh, height variation, which I think is something I continue to apply to all my bases. You're gonna see that later on. Height variation really, really helps the feel of the base. More machines down here. This is a bit less organized, but again, it's still an improvement, I think. Yeah, all the ore miners back here. Oh man, this brings back so many memories. This is awesome. Yeah, astral sorcery in the back here. And then I think there was Thomcraft over here. Yeah, this was the altar infusion and stuff. It was definitely an interesting approach to sort of confine myself into these walls and then build within it. And I think personally, it led to some very interesting design decisions here. One thing that is consistent among all of these playthroughs and worlds that I'm going to show you today is that all of them started with a goal in mind. The first terrible world that we looked at was just to finish the pack. I just wanted to get through that thing, get all of the quests in the quest book and call it a day. The second time around the castle, I wanted to finish the castle, which I was satisfied with at the time. Even though we can spot some mistakes now, you can always spot some mistakes. There's always room for improvement. But yeah, having a goal or a reason to play is one of the things that ultimately keeps me going with these mod packs. Even when you're pushing the 500 hour limit, I think which we are here, I think this is just just before 500 hours worth in this world. And this was my first introduction to Greg Tech. If you don't know what Greg Tech is, I might do a video in the future explaining everything about Greg Tech, at least as much as I know. <laughs> I don't know about that, honestly, because uh, Greg Tech, there's still a lot to learn. Greg Tech is a very interesting mod, very one of my favorite ways to play this game. But the goal with this series, the goal with this world was to learn everything Greg Tech. And this demanded a lot of uh, mindset changes, actually. And what I mean by that is the approach to the pack was very different here. Again, base building took a bit of a backseat and it was all functionality. I wanted everything to be functional here. The aesthetics were an afterthought, which actually didn't turn out too bad, honestly. I actually really like the look. I missed some blocks here. I actually really like the look of this base. But yeah, because this pack was so difficult, especially since it was my first time playing Greg Tech, everything had to actually work here. So you can kind of see things here were much more neat to begin with. And actually, this isn't the first iteration of this base. Yeah, I really like these assembly lines right here. Where we're standing right now is actually, this is actually the same world we were just in a minute ago. Only this backup is from around 11 days prior, 11 days playtime. And this is an approach quite different to Enigmatica. So here we wanted everything to be functional, right? And this is what you might call a lawn base. <laughs> it's a very popular term in our Discord channel. A lawn base is like no, no regard to aesthetics whatsoever. This is all functional. And everything is just on one big chunk aligned grid, which is the fastest way to play for sure. So this is basically the way the pack started for me. This is this is the approach we took right at the beginning. And then as we worked our way through the technology tiers, we rebuilt the base into what you can see here. So yeah, very different approaches, but uh, one thing remains and that is we had a goal in mind. And I would say that I achieved that goal. I did learn a lot about Greg Tech playing Omni Factory and all of that knowledge I used to play through FTB interactions. I almost said Inferno there. And look at look at these glasses. <laughs> yeah, so this was about seven or eight months later after a small break from YouTube. But honestly, I love doing this so much that I uh, I had to come back and we we beat FTB Interactions here. Unlike Omni Factory, FTB Interactions has Greg Tech, but also sprinkles in some magic mods. And most of you are going to be familiar with Inferno. Actually, this was developed by the same lead developer, Sereth. This is one of the best 1.12 packs of all time as well. If you haven't played interactions, definitely consider it. But this was a bit of a step up in difficulty because of the some of the custom things in this pack, as well as the magic integrations. As you can see here, we have Astral Sorcery. There was a lot of uh, custom multi-blocks here as well. Things like Starlight. Actually, what is this called? The Sky Cauldron, that's right. Yeah, so in terms of the base, still not perfect. This was a very, very slow base to construct. This, I feel like, was put together right at the very end. And the lesson I learned from this was um, clean up as you go, because I had a lot of cleaning up to do here at the end of the pack. 
It's definitely easier to clean as you go, so I've kind of followed that philosophy ever since. I am much more pleased with how this base turned out and the series overall. If you want to check out interactions, I do recommend you do so on this channel. Yeah, I became a lot more confident here. There's a lot of, uh, this is a lot more clean to what we've seen before, right? I think the video series as well on YouTube turned out much better than the Enigmatica series. So I might recommend that you watch FTBA interactions, but definitely don't watch, don't watch Enigmatica. <laughs> That's awful. Yeah, I really, really like this base. This is where the original idea for Menril came from. You may remember I mentioned this at the start of ATM7. I do like the use of these bricks. Maybe we could have done with a better floor. But again, the, the idea of the main intersection here also cropped up here in interactions. Much more of a clean controller setup. This is much more like what you would find nowadays in one of my bases. This one turned out a bit more flat because of functionality reasons, but I still like the variety we had in this base. And this was around 350 hours to completion, something like that. I had a really great time in this pack though. This was one of the best. This was one of my favorites. Yeah, this is where things started to get really, really big in terms of the builds. And in fact, this right here is the original Breeks. If you guys are in Discord, you know exactly who this is, but this is Breeks right here. Hey, <laughs> he's still here. He's gonna live out his days in that glass container. Yeah, so my goal here was to beat the pack, of course, 100% completion. But I also tried to use this series to not only improve my skills inside Minecraft, but also as an opportunity to share my experiences here in Interactions. And sharing my experiences was one of the things that got me through Divine Journey 2. Divine Journey 2, oh my goodness, this also brings back a lot of memories. <laughs> Divine Journey 2, this was the longest mod pack series on my channel thus far. Certainly the biggest mod pack I've ever completed. And this was also one of my favorites. This was an epic journey through Divine Journey. Yeah, we spent 694 hours in Divine Journey 2. A very, very lengthy experience. And I suspect this is how many of you actually found my channel through this series. The channel really, really started to grow around this time. And I produced some of my favorite videos on the channel here as well. But yes, sharing your experiences can really, really help you with your motivation. Whether you decide to make videos or live stream or even just share things in a Discord community, I think that's something that can really, really help you during your own playthroughs. I think I can safely say I would not have made it all the way through this pack without you guys. And it makes it a lot more fun as well. So yeah, almost 700 hours to beat Divine Journey 2 and I was so sick of this limestone afterwards. But honestly, despite that, I think it was one of my favorite bases. Just because of how huge this thing is. I mean, it is a massive mega base. Three blood magic altars. The amount of automation in here was insane. And the thing we kind of took away from this was, uh, well, you have to passive everything. And by passive, I mean create things before you actually need it. So your materials are all set up to craft all the way down to all the resources you need. And this base was developed piece by piece. So I definitely didn't do any sort of Enigmatica style where I, where I built the outline first. This was all little smaller modules which fitted together, somehow. I, I still don't know how I managed to pull this off. But again, this was designed around the functionality. And one of the other things that was really reinforced with Divine Journey 2 is not just setting yourself a big goal like I want to complete this pack, I want to 100% the quest book. It's also important, I feel like, to set smaller goals within that. So like, for example, you could take things chapter by chapter from the quest book. Many mod packs have different chapters, which usually is a good way to split up your achievements within the game. And it's also amazing that we have everything in green here. Oh, look at this, still unclaimed quest rewards, that's funny. Almost every page has unclaimed quest rewards. <laughs> yeah, the quest book is a good way to divide up your achievements within the game. And that is something I feel is done well here in Create Above and Beyond, the next series on the channel and the next mod pack I completed. So this was the very beginning of the year, January 2022 that we started this pack. And Create Above and Beyond, this was my introduction to the Create mod itself. This is a great little pack. I'm not quite sure what happened to all my items, they appear to be gone. Maybe it's still on the moon, I actually don't remember how this series ended. I think we might have got stuck on the moon. <laughs> and it's also very dark in here, I don't really know what deal with that is, maybe we had night vision at the time. Yeah, so the goal with this pack was to learn the Create mod. And as you can see here, this gets you into a lot of the Create contraptions. The quest book is basically split into five different chapters. And once you have the items from each chapter, you basically build yourself a rocket into space, which I'm thinking is where all of our items are. Although that doesn't make sense because the space suit is here. Maybe this backup was from before I went to the moon. Either way, this was a very, very different approach to Divine Journey 2, just because of the requirements of the pack. It's a very focused experience in the create mod and was only around 140 hours or so. And that was actually one of the nice things about Create Above and Beyond. It gave me a bit of a break from the massive experience that was Divine Journey 2. And after the break, we jumped into one of the packs I've spent the most time in. I have 960 hours in this world. 
Some people, including myself actually, I, I would consider this the most difficult Minecraft mod pack. If you consider the whole package. Yeah, Greg Tech New Horizons. It's infamous at this point. However, it can also be a lot of fun, and I certainly did have a lot of fun in this world. And one of the things we can learn from this pack is that taking breaks is very important, especially when you consider the amount of time scale that we're talking about here. New Horizons is a very unforgiving experience, but it is very rewarding, despite what many people will tell you. <laughs> it is a very fun pack if you, uh, if you know exactly what you're getting yourself into. Similar to Interactions, this also has Greg Tech and Magic mods. However, this version of Greg Tech is very different to the ones we've seen previously in this video. There's a lot of intricacies about how power is distributed and how multi-blocks work. Lots of very specific things, which I'm not going to go into detail with in this video. However, unfortunately, this pack got the best of me and we did not finish this mod pack. This base, despite how intricate it may look, is not a completed GTNH base, far from it. We are still very, very far from the end in this world. But yeah, if I'm going to be honest, this is one of my least favourite bases. Not necessarily the least favourite pack, but definitely the least favourite in terms of base design. It's just so boring and so bland and it, I just don't want to be here anymore. <laughs> so the next lesson we can learn from this is design somewhere that you want to spend time in. And that definitely turned out not to be the case here. I think this was a bit of a fail in terms of the block palette and, and the base design as a whole. But it is very functional, I will say that much. And since this is a long pack, this is actually the second base. The original starter base here, which of course never got finished, is actually here in the overworld. This base I much prefer over the void world base, but there's still something about it which I really, really dislike. And not just because these guys, I have a personal vendetta against these guys. <laughs> the drowned creeper. Not just because these guys exist here, but base design and planning as a whole could probably be its own video. But what we can learn from this is that it's very important to plan. That is sometimes difficult when you don't know exactly what to expect from the mod pack, but it's just something I think that you have to be patient with, and you can't be afraid to fail like we did here. We failed many, many times, and we're going to continue to fail. Failing is an essential part of learning, I think. However, it's no use just failing over and over again. You have to try to learn from your mistakes, and that is the approach I tried to take here in Nomi Factory, almost the same as Omni Factory, which we seen earlier on. This is basically the updated version, rebranded as Nomi Factory. So it's almost the same pack, but we have some new features in this version. So my goal this time, and something that might help you guys out if you're also struggling for things to play, is to try to race against yourself. So my objective here was to try to beat the time that I previously set to get to the end of Omni Factory, which we did manage to achieve here. Yeah, this took about 290 hours compared to just under 500 the first time we played Omni Factory. One thing that I personally learned from this is that I do not like timers. You can see it in the bottom right. That timer down there stressed me out all the way through this playthrough. So uh, yeah, I do not like speedrunning. I'm not a speedrunner. But that might be also something you can consider to do some self-imposed challenges, not necessarily just speedruns. By the way, this was also another pretty functional base first. The aesthetics here kind of took a backseat, but I do like how nice and neat it ended up here. For the most part, everything is pretty organized. And this base even has a chicken, which is the best part. The Nomi Factory chicken. But yes, self-imposed challenges. It's something that I tried to do right after the Nomi Factory series with the collection project. This is a completely vanilla world for 1.19. And the goal with this world was to check out some of the new features for 1.19 and also improve the building skills. Again, it's a very different style to any of the modded bases we've seen previously. The building here really, really took me out of my comfort zone. And for the most part, I'm actually really happy with how this world turned out, even though it's not finished. So the collection project was supposed to be collecting every single item in the game, every single item and block in the game. And the video series on YouTube from this world is actually the series I'm most proud of on my channel. I think I put the most work into each and every episode there and it got the least amount of views, which <laughs> is kind of funny, but I accept that. That's totally fair. If you guys want to see modded, I kind of prefer modded if I'm, if I'm being honest. I'm not complaining at all because modded is more fun in my opinion, but it just simply isn't possible for me to continue the- of course it's raining. Yeah, it simply isn't possible for me to continue the, the time investment that I need for this series to uh, make, it any, make it a viable one for the channel. I'm definitely not in this whole YouTube game to chase views, that's, that's not what I'm about. I'm a, I really just- honestly, I just want to play this game. <laughs> That's basically what's up. For me personally, what I took away from this world was uh, my ability to produce videos. I think that again took another step up with this series. And also this will form. I mean, look at this thing. I am. Um, I still love the way this turned out. Oh, it's amazing. I love it. So what does this mean for you guys? Maybe, maybe modded isn't for you. Maybe you do prefer the vanilla game. I think that is definitely something worth giving a shot. 
Maybe you actually prefer building over all of the tech and automation. Maybe you're more of a creative type. And getting creative is exactly what I try to do here in All The Mod 7 Skyblock. If you've seen the Let's Play then you know we took the most difficult way to get many of the resources, and we even self-imposed a challenge not to use any EMC. I think mixing up the choice in mods and doing things you've never done before can really spice up your own gameplay. Perhaps consider building things just because you can, like this elevator for example. It serves no purpose, we have creative flight, but listen. I hope this works. Yeah, maybe use create for smelting items rather than mechanism, or maybe go with refined storage over applied energistics. Choosing a different mod or approach to a problem can be a really great way to keep the gameplay interesting for yourself. For example, this mechanism fission reactor. It's the first time I've set one of these guys up and I really enjoy this part of the pack. And this also kind of neatly brings us around to the last pack, the most recent pack. FTB Inferno, maybe if you struggle to self-impose your own challenges, or find that you keep coming back to the same mods over and over again. Maybe try to seek out a pack like FTB Inferno. This pack will really mix up the gameplay and force you to play in a very, very different playstyle to what you're used to. The progression in this is very unique as it's a nether pack. Check out the review which I just released recently actually if you want the full overview on this mod pack. As well as any of the other series or worlds you've seen on this channel, there should be playlists available on my channel. And also let me know what which base you prefer the most, which is your favourite threefold base. For me personally, I really like Inferno, just in terms of the aesthetics. Perhaps the shaders carry us here a bit? I'm not sure. But there's definitely nothing stopping you from playing with shaders. That might be another thing to consider during your playthrough, maybe, maybe consider playing with shaders. Or the replay mod in the case of Vanilla. Most of the fun in this game is that you can play however you wish, sometimes that gives you a bit too much choice though. Sometimes it's hard not to fall into choice overload. <laughs> and that's not really something I can help you with here because honestly I struggle with that myself. You know I wasn't actually sure if I should make this video or not but I'm kind of glad I did. I'm curious to hear your guys thoughts but going through all those Minecraft saves, that definitely brought back some memories. And I definitely recommend if you guys also have them, go through them one day, it's, it's, it's an experience. Anyways, if this video helped at least one person then I'm going to be happy, that's, that's the main thing. And if you're not familiar with some of the series that I've shown in this video, I hope that you enjoyed a look through some of the worlds that I've put together. It was definitely a lot of fun for me. And hopefully a lot more adventure to come on this channel. Look out for the next series starting shortly. I'm really, really excited for the next journey. But yeah, we're going to leave things here. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know what you think about this video in the comment section below. And I hope to see you again here very soon.